Investment in securities market is subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. How much should a typical Indian family allocate towards listed market equities? Uh, for deciding on the exact equity allocation, you know, uh, you know, more, many people use you know a simple rule of thumb. So you just take the current age, uh, you know, uh, hundred minus that current age, uh, you know, that can be used as a. Why do you think every investor who's watching this podcast? Why should every investor very seriously consider a significant part of their portfolio? for allocation to equity markets equity market uh, which if you can represent with our the nifty 50 index has generated returns of around 12% per year roughly so this means that someone who had invested say suppose 100 rupees mm -hmm. in december 2012 mm -hmm. would have seen their wealth compound by roughly three times over the last 10 years and this is from december 2012 to december 2022 Hi, I'm Saurabh Mukherjee and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Guru Mantra with Saurabh. This is the first podcast in the series and I'm joined by my colleague Krishnan. Uh, Krishnan works in our in Marcellus's Investment Advisory Division and our job in this podcast and in the subsequent podcast will be to take you through some of the central tenets, some of the central facets of equity investing in India. In this first podcast, we will focus on the importance of equities compared to other asset classes in India, right? So if you look at the Reserve Bank of India's data, the RBI has repeatedly said that 95% of Indian households' assets is in physical assets, gold and real estate primarily. Now, now Krishna, this is no secret, right? It's well known that Indian households love buying uh, 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 gold and real estate. And whilst courtesy podcasts like this and courtesy sales also books that I've written, Coffee Can Investing, for example, there is growing awareness of equity investing. But even today, equity investing ranks way below, way below equities, uh, way below gold and real estate in the pecking order, right? Why do you think, why do you think every investor who's watching this podcast, why should every investor very seriously consider a significant part of their portfolio for allocation to equity markets? Sure. So uh, if you look at the data over the last decade, right, so Indian economy has grown uh, at roughly around say 10% uh, per year. Um, and during the same period, if you look at our listed equity market, uh, which if you can represent with our the Nifty 50 index has generated returns of around 12% per year, roughly. So this means that someone who had invested say suppose 100 rupees mm -hmm. in December 2012 mm -hmm. would have seen their wealth compound by roughly three times over the last 10 years and this is from December 2012 to December 2022 right so roughly 12 percent annualized return per year right mm -hmm. if you compare these returns with, with say the returns you know which uh, or returns of investing in gold and even fixed deposit uh, which is in fact favored by most Indian investors, these have written around 6.1% and 7% hmm. per year respectively. Hmm. Again, we are talking about like for like over the last 10 years. So over this 10 year period, this uh, 2012 to 2022 period, uh, annual inflation in India has roughly averaged around 5.8%, hmm. right? So among all the asset classes, you know, only equities would have generated meaningful inflation beating returns and compounded mm -hmm. investors' wealth in real terms. And I, in fact, real terms, I think we can make an even bigger point, right? So, the data data you. If you go back to say 2002, 20 year compounding, the 20 year compounding in Indian equities will be in the range of 16, 17x. Mm -hmm. So, 12, 13 percent, 12, 13 percent over long periods of time as compared to inflation, which is 5.5, 6 percent. So, therefore, real return, nominal return minus inflation. Real return equities, Indian equities has given in the order of magnitude of 6-7%. Hmm. Right? How does that compare to other asset classes, Krishna? So, uh, again, like I said, I mean, when you look at, uh, you know, the real returns, uh, you know, so I talked about the returns for gold and uh, uh, the fixed deposit, 6% six, six and 7%. Right. Barely, 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 you know, you know, you know, uh, you know zero ke aspas real return. Hai. Right. So the real returns are very, uh, uh, you know, small when you compare to the real returns delivered by uh, equities. Right. And, equities. And I just request our podcast listeners to keep in mind that 
Indian equities may typical households allocation is barely two to three percent of the household Correct. wealth, and it's astonishing Correct. that the only asset class which is generating hefty real returns, household allocation is a mere two three percent. Carry on. You're you talking about the returns generated by other asset classes, right? So, uh, so one of the reasons why equities deliver higher returns uh, for you know people who are listening to this podcast is you know it's uh, it's simply because it's a higher risk asset class, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when we say higher risk, essentially that means uh, it's more volatile. Uh, so you know if you are invested in equities, you are prone to see more fluctuations in your you know your uh, you know the invested uh, you know money, uh, and this also means your returns could be lumpy. And fluctuate year on year, hmm. right? Uh, whereas if you invest in a in a bank FD, right? Maybe because you know many people perceive it as a lower asset class, hmm. a lower risk asset class, and the, the reason is simply that you know there is no fluctuation at all, hmm. right? And because uh, you know you have a deposit insurance, etc., so your downside hmm. uh, is completely protected, hmm. right? On the other hand, there is no not much upside because essentially the interest which you are earning is essentially the number which I told you seven percent. Hmm. There's no real returns. There's no real return yeah. as such. Yeah. So that's the risk, right? So um, also let's not forget that it's no, not just returns. So you know, again, we just talked about returns, uh, but uh, you know, in an asset class, for example, real estate, hmm. right? We know that real estate is not generally very liquid. What does liquid mean, Krishan? So uh, meaning that you know, if you need to, for example, if you own a house, hmm. right? And if you, uh, or for example, if you have invested in your house, uh, a residential property, suppose, and if you want to immediately realize. You know the, the value of the, the house. value of the house right. by selling the house. It's uh, generally difficult to do it yeah, yeah. immediately. I, I, I know there's some practical experience. I sold my parents' flat in Delhi last year. It took me the best part of three months, and the use of two brokers to find a buyer. Right. So, uh, so this is the the liquidity aspect of it. Now, uh, you know, if you compare this with listed equity markets, right, where you know, if you're invested in any of the top 500 stocks in India, generally, you know, you can, uh, you know, whatever you have invested, generally, you can realize those proceeds, uh, you know, instantaneously. instantaneously. Right. So, liquidity is generally not an issue so when it comes to equities. Fascinating. You're saying uh, Indian equities are giving you 12, 13 percent nominal as an asset class historically over the last 20 years. That means over and above inflation, 6-7 percent ki kamai prati varsh, and over and above that, Indian equities has high liquidity. जब पैसा चाहिए तुरंत आपको मार्केट पैसा दे सकता है. Exactly. So this is not just returns, but essentially also the uh, the liquidity aspect of it, which you know many people tend to ignore. And let's not forget in real estate there are other transaction costs, right. right? So for example, when you buy and sell real estate, you know there is obviously you know the stamp duty which you need to pay in most Indian right. cities, right. Uh, and then obviously you know plethora of taxes, yeah. right? Uh, not that you know. Equities doesn't have those transaction costs, but when you compare it like for like, right. you know the whole sequence of transaction from buying a house to selling a house, right? Uh, in generally, in most Indian cities, again the uh, the transaction cost uh, as such, five six percent nikal jata hai. Exactly, right? And over and over, rental yield is hardly anything. Exactly, right? One and a half two percent. Uh, that's gross of tax, net of tax. Rental yields will come out to one to one and a half percent. So basically, you're saying the argument is quite clinching that from a long term returns perspective. Indian equities is the most attractive asset class. Add to that, it's liquid and it's tax friendly. Yes. The question then arises, Krishnan, how much should a typical Indian family allocate towards listed market equities? Sure. So, uh, so the ideal allocation towards equities, uh, you know, obviously depends on that individual's age, uh, occupation, uh, risk appetite. Right. When I say risk appetite, it's the willingness and ability to take risk. Uh, among other factors, obviously, uh, but these are the most important ones. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, so again, this is these are the factors which one should use for deciding, uh, you know, whether to meaningfully allocate towards equities, uh, because this is absolutely required. Like we discussed, you know, basis what we have discussed till now. If you want to maintain or even grow your savings, net of inflation, right? Uh, for deciding on the exact equity allocation, you know, uh, you know, more, many people use you know a simple rule of thumb. So you just take the current age, uh, you know, uh, 100 minus that current age, uh, you know, that can be used as a simple rule my of thumb. My grandfather passed away a decade or so back. He was 100 when he passed away, okay. right? So he used to keep asking me uh, uh, how much should I put in. So I, as I explained in our book, Coffee Can Investing, and as I practice myself, what I do is whatever monies my family might need over the next. Two to three years, right? So, say children going to university, uh, some emergency uh, emergency fund for my wife and I in case we fall ill. So, whatever money I might need for the next two to three years, 
we keep that in uh, bank fixed deposits and liquid funds because that's where we're not trying to generate income that's Correct. just a rainy day a rainy day corpus the rest of our money we invest in indian indian equities uh, now if i was retired and i didn't have monthly salary uh, then obviously my next 2 to 3 year uh, uh, cash requirements would be that much higher exactly. uh, 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 but but whatever age you are uh i have explained this in coffee can investing uh, and i have practiced it myself whatever age you are i reckon agle 2 3 saal ka jo aapko punji ki zarurat ho sakti hai aap usko fixed deposits mein rakhiye aur liquid funds um, and the rest of it should be allocated to indian equities because as you pointed out so nicely in the beginning of this podcast indian equities is the only asset class that gives you returns 6 to 7% above the rate of inflation 12 13% ki aapki kamai zindagi badalne wale amounts nothing else in the indian stock market can match that thank you so much for joining us in in money and in, in this uh, podcast with saurabh